Hare Krishna. So we will resume our discussion on the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita from uh, uh, verse 24. Sanishayena yokta vyo yoga nirvana chetesha sankalpa prabhavan kamams taktva sarvana seshataha manasevindriya gramam vinimaya samantaha Translation one should engage oneself in the practice of yoga with determination and faith and should not be deviated from the path. One should abandon without exception all material desires born of mental speculation and thus control all the senses on all sides by the mind. So the previous verse was a description of the perfected stage of yoga and uh, Krishna here describes the path to it. So in two verses, in this verse he is describing the initial path and in 25 we will describe the advanced path. So determination, faith, not being deviated, abandoning material desires, uh, control of the senses. So these are all the uh, qualities that one develops uh, as a prerequisite and during the first four stages, the yoga ruruksha uh, stage. So because the process of hastang yoga is long and arduous, Krishna is, is cautioning that uh, uh, one should have determination as well as faith. So determination because the process is, is difficult. Controlling of the senses, being in isolation. So uh, one needs determination and faith because the results take a long time in coming. And sometimes many lifetimes. So there should be faith that the path is going to yield the, the results and one should not be distracted by the side effects of yoga. So as we discussed at every stage, there is some side effect that may be desirous from a material perspective. During the first four stages, one develops uh, bodily strength. One, uh, uh, by, by the yam niyam and the asans, pranayam, one's health becomes strong, uh, one, bec uh, one can go for extended periods of time without sleeping. So the material uh, aspects of one's body becomes strong. And then some, someone may get distracted by that. Then let me continue do that only. And then as one advances, then the more mystical aspects of the yoga begins to manifest. One begins to acquire siddhis, the able to, ability to travel in the subtle body, the ability to uh, change one's body, manipulate material nature. These are also side effects. So Krishna is cautioning that one should not be distracted by the side effects. Next verse. Verse 25. Shane shane rupar meda buddhaya dhriti grihitaya atma sanstam manaha kritva Gradually, step by step, one should become situated in trance by means of intelligence sustained by full conviction. And thus the mind should be fixed on the self alone and should think of nothing else. So this verse talks about the maturity of yoga. And Krishna, he uses the word shane shane, gradually, step by step, slowly. So once again, Krishna is emphasizing on the, on the fact that the process is slow, gradual, requires patience, determination, faith. Uh, and uh, the final four stages are more internal. 
so not much is spoken about it because it's difficult to convey that level of meditation uh, through words the initial four stages are more external so we see saw krishna describe ex- extensively in terms of the place to sit the posture to sit the do's and the don'ts during the initial four stages the final four stages the description is more qualitative that the mind should be fixed on the self alone and should think of nothing else okay so let's move on to the next verse verse 26 यतो यतो निश्चलति मनश्चलमस्थिम ततस्तो निम्येत आत्मन एव वशम नएत फ्रॉम वेर एवर द माइंड वैंडर्स ड्यू टू इट्स फ्लिकरिंग एंड अनस्टडी नेचर वन मस सर्टनली विड्रॉ इट एंड ब्रिंग इट बैक अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ द सेल्फ so as one advances in yoga uh, astanga yoga the focus is increasingly on mind because it is through the mind that one meditates so uh, verses 24 and 25 describe the practices during the the preliminary and the advanced stage of yoga and while the mind is an obstacle at all stages it is more so in the mature stages because of the increased reliance of the yogi on the mind to meditate so krishna here says that that yato uh, yato nischalati manas chanchalam asthiram so he talks about the three qualities of an uncontrolled mind so the mind could be could be unsteady so an unsteady mind is asthiram and uh, an asthira uh, buddhi and unsteady mind will have a tendency to follow material pleasures so such a person may engage in astang yoga and give it up enjoy materially try and come and engage again so the uh, the mind uh, engages and disengages so that is asthiram then nischalam is wandering uh, nischalam means that uh, the mind cannot stay focused on one object for a long time it loses focus and focuses on something else and chanchalam means flickering flickering is like the light of a of a, of a lamp in in a wind so it may flicker but the light is always on the intensity may change so these are uh, increasing uh, ability to control the mind so one's mind who's very who's, who's minimally controlled is asthiram that it will engage and disengage better than that is is nischalam so the nischalam mind will not disengage but it will it will uh, uh, lose focus and the flickering mind does not lose focus but it may change in the intensity of the focus so an analogy is like if somebody is driving a car so the person who has an unsteady mind the car sometimes goes forward sometimes backward sometimes the gear is driving the car forward and sometimes it is going backward the uh, wandering mind may always go forward but may move from one lane to another so it may be it may be all over the road and a flickering mind may sometimes it the car stays on the road it stays on the lane but sometimes it goes fast and sometimes it goes slow now these qualities that the mind acquires are because of the subtle sinful tendencies of previous life because the nature of the pristine mind is to engage in the lord but when it is contaminated by sinful desires then because of 
the self-perpetuating nature of sin, it also embeds itself in the subtle body in terms of desires. So if somebody steals, then the desire to steal gets embedded in that person's subtle body. So the person without even without even being aware of it, then begins to meditate on, on the uh, uh, stealing from other people. So uh, important to note that the nature of the mind is such that even at an advanced stage, the mind, mind wanders and injunction that Krishna gives is that one should withdraw the mind. So niyama by regulating from whether it is unsteady, whether it is wandering, whether it is flickering, the same solution is there that that withdraw the mind through the process of of uh, following regulations and make the mind obedient to to atmani vasham nayat and make the mind obedient only to the atma to the self. Okay, next verse. Verse 27. Prashanta manasam menam yoginam sukham uttamam upenti shanta rajasama brahma bhutam akalmasham. The yogi whose mind is fixed on me verily attains the highest perfection of transcendental happiness. He is beyond the mode of passion. He realizes his qualitative identity with the Supreme and thus he is free from all reactions to past deeds. So in the next uh, uh, six verses from 27 to 32, Krishna talks about the destination of the yogi and uh, 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 important to understand over here is that the destination of a yogi will depend on the desires of the yogi. So it's not that all the yogis will end up at the same destination. So this particular verse, the Prashanta Manasam Hayanam, talks about Brahman realization. In the last line you see, it's a Brahma Bhutam Akalmasham. So Akalmasham means freed from all past material activities. And uh, Shanta Rajasam, so all the passions have been pacified. So all the material desires are now quiesced. All the material sins have been have been eradicated and what does the person attain upaiti brahma bhutam so that person attains the the brahman uh, level in the next four verses 28 to 31 krishna will speak about paramatma realization verse 28 Yunjan evam sadatmanam yogi vigata kalmashaha sukhena brahma samparsham atyantam sukham ashnate. Thus, the self controlled yogi, constantly engaged in yoga practice, becomes free from all material contamination and achieves the highest stage of perfect happiness and transcendental loving service to the Lord. So beginning from this verse, Krishna is now going to talk about Paramatma realization. And uh, uh, <clears throat> one thing that you will notice over here is the introduction of, of the, uh, uh, the term Brahma Samparsham. So Brahma Samparshan translates to being in constant touch with the with the Supreme Lord. <coughs> so <coughs> excuse me. So how does this uh, uh, how does the yogi arrive to this position? So Atmanam Yunjan. Atmanam Yunjan means that by following the prescribed process, the person is now experiencing his self as a spiritual entity 
then vigata kalmasha that all the faults have been burnt away by following this method so the faults are in terms of of the stockpile of sinful reactions and desires then sukhena now the yogi attains unlimited happiness by brahma samparsha by the realization of parmatma so <clears throat> you also notice the the word sukhena so in the stage of uh, uh, brahma realization there is no there is no mention of sukhena right uh, um, i i take that back there is uh, uh, mention of the uh, of the verse uh, word phrase uh, uh, sukham uttamam the highest happiness but that highest happiness is the absence of sins and right? because there is no positive engagement right so right after sukham uh, uttamam is shantarajasam that all the desires have now been pacified and akalmasham because of freedom from past sinful reactions so when everything has been pacified everything has been quieted then it is a stage of neutrality but the sukham that is mentioned over here param sukham that is coming directly from engaging with the lord in the form of the parmatma okay let's go to the next verse verse 29 sarvabhuta stham atmanam sarvabhutani chatmane ikshate yoga yuktaatma sarvatra samadarshanah a true yogi observes me in all beings and also sees every being in me indeed the self realized person sees me the same supreme lord every where so this verse describes the vision of a true yogi so there are three uh, uh, equalness by which the yogi sees so this is the actual vision of the yogi there is no intellectual and adjustment so it's not that the yogi sees and then through the process of uh, uh, of uh, knowledge or through the process of scriptural understanding he has just his vision this actually becomes the the natural vision of the yogi so first is that he he uh, krishna says he sees me everywhere so this is the vision of one seeing the paramatma everywhere then he sees every being in krishna so this is the all protecting mood of the paramatma and then sees me in all beings so this is the the uh, uh, the neutral position of paramatma that paramatma is equal to all so what is the how does the yogi sees uh, the super soul paramatma that the paramatma is all pervading everywhere the paramatma is protecting everyone because everyone is in the paramatma and the paramatma is neutral how does he attain this position so krishna says that yoga yukta atma so by the process of samadhi one is now able to see both the atma and the parmatma so he sees the parmatma as uh, as sarvabhutastham all pervading sarvabhutani atmani as protecting everyone and samadarshana as equal to all okay let's move on to the next verse verse 30 yo mam pashyati sarvat sarvam cha mai pashyati tasya ham na pranashyami sa cha me na pranashyati for one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me i am never lost nor is he ever lost to 
me so this is the result of the vision of the yogi that was described in the previous verse the one who was seeing the parmatma everywhere in everybody and everyone in the parmatma how does krishna reciprocate to such a person <clears throat> so krishna promises to such a person that i will never become invisible to such a yogi so krishna says na pranashyami and at the same time the yogi will never become invisible to me so so <clears throat> uh, one may say that how can somebody become invisible to krishna but this visibility is of a different kind this is that between between uh, the lord and his devotee so the lord never uh, loses sight of his devotee and the devotee never does not ever lose sight of the lord so this is the position of a perfected yogi who sees krishna everywhere so krishna uses the word sarvatra and sarvatra means uh, uh, everywhere means material external spiritual internal and marginal in terms of the soul so he sees krishna everywhere and krishna reciprocates by always bestowing his loving glance on such a exalted soul proper rise that an intimate relationship between the lord and the devotee then exists in that stage the living entity can never be annihilated nor is the personality to godhead ever out of the sight of the of the devotee so these verses were talking about the relationship between the lord and in the parmatma form and a yogi verse 31 sarva bhuta sthitam yomam vajate katvam astitah sarvatha vartamano pi sayogi mai vartate such a yogi who engages in the worshipful worship full service of the super soul knowing that i and the super soul are one remains always in me in all circumstances so in this verse krishna is now declaring that he is the origin of the parmatma so uh, uh, the yogi who worships krishna as parmatma sarva bhuta sitam yo maam so maam is is krishna now pointing to himself standing in the two armed form in front of arjun right so he is saying sarva bhuta sitam yo maam that one understands one who understands that uh, i and the super soul are one will engage in the worshipful service of the lord and the result is that the person will always remain in krishna's internal energy um uh, so the 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 point to understand over here is that uh, those who aspire for parmatma realization it's not that they are unaware of the relationship between parmatma and krishna it's not that they are envious of krishna swayam bhagwan it's just that because of their nature and propensity they are attracted to a certain form of krishna so even when krishna is there as a person he appears in many incarnations so he is there as krishna as bal roop as lord ram as narsingha dev and uh, those who worship krishna in different forms they are all aware of the fact that they are manifestations of swayam bhagwan but because of their nature they are attracted to a certain rasa so similarly those who are aspiring for brahman realization those who are aspiring for parmatma realization they are fully aware of the fact that 
they are uh, uh, they are based on uh, uh, Krishna's personal form, but they are attracted because if they were not, if they were not able to uh, establish that relationship, then their realization would have been incomplete. So here, Krishna, for the sake of completeness, is is emphasizing it again that it is me who who appears as as Krishna. Prabhupada says that the yogi in Krishna consciousness, even though he may be engaged in various activities while in material existence, remains always situated in in Krishna. So uh, another important point that is made here is when Krishna says remains always in me in all circumstances, that at this stage the yogi is no longer bound by the rules and regulations. So, so far, there was a lot of emphasis on submitting to the rules and regulation. But at this stage, when the yogi has come in contact with the Sarup Shakti of the Lord, when the yogi is now, now in direct vision of the Lord, then uh, the, the need for performing uh, uh, regulated devotional service is no longer there because it is now replaced by spontaneous uh, uh, devotional service. So the person externally may still be doing the same thing, but the impetus is no longer the desire to follow rules and regulation. The impetus now is to uh, is simply a manifestation of the relationship with the Lord that he has been that he is now experiencing. Okay, next verse. Okay, verse 32. Atma pe Atma pamena sarvatra samampashati yo arjuna sukham vaya diva dukham sa yogi paramomata. He is the perfect yogi who, by comparison to his own self, sees the true equality of all beings in both their happiness and their distress. O Arjun. So this is the verse where the super soul realized devotee becomes a bhakta. So previously, and this is in 525, Krishna had spoken about Sarva Bhuta Hiterataha, that a Nishkam yogi is engaged in the welfare of all beings. And uh, we see that mood is continuing in this verse. So what is the mood of the person at this time? That uh, the person desires happiness for others just like he would desire for himself. And he considers the distress of others to be his own distress. So it is said that... Uh, uh, the most difficult thing is to be happy for the happiness of others. Uh, one may find it easier to uh, uh, to show sympathy to a person in distress, genuine sympathy. A person may genuinely be sorry for a person in distress, but very difficult to actually experience the same level of happiness that the other person is is experiencing. But uh, Krishna makes both the points over here. That when the person sees the other, happy, other person happy, then he is genuinely happy. And when he sees the other person in distress, he considers it to be like his own distress. So <clears throat> this is the highest form of Sama Drishti. So Prabhupada explains that the perfect yogi knows that the living being who is conditioned by the modes of material nature is subject to the threefold material misery due to the forget forgetfulness of his relationship with Krishna. And because one in Krishna consciousness is happy, he tries to distribute the knowledge of Krishna everywhere. So we see that the mood of a devotee is now more uh, encompassing. An Atma Jnani essentially is happy in the realization of the self. When one realizes the Paramatma, then 
that the the sense of uh, compassion for others also manifests because of the person seeing the Paramatma in others. But at at the stage of devotional service, the 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 notion of paradukha dukhi, or basically feeling the sorrows of others, and Prabhupada would, would often say that uh, the biggest misery of the people in this world is material existence and that's why the purport he says that is why they actively preach so we'll stop over here in the next discussion we should uh, complete the chapter wherein arjun will now begin to ask about uh, the impediments to this advanced stage okay thank you Hare Krishna, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai.